focus of the work that my team has been doing over the last couple of years has been trying to sort through these words and other words um, that you might like, maybe that begin with C. And it's really about, given that this is our reality, or it has become our reality, how do we feel about it? What are we going to do about it? Um, how can we make this, this transition more exciting or at least more palatable and help people capitalize on what you can do with AI? And I think it's also, the place I'm really interested in is the juxtaposition of where it helps, but also where it inhibits. And we've had questions about this, and I think there's a lot of unknowns here, so I'm going to say a lot of things and share some of the research that we've done. But I also invite all of you to, to speculate with me, because this is a new frontier. So our hypothesis going into this is that AI and design is valuable when it extrapolates away the mundane. So this, again, benefits both the novice and the advanced users. So we brought in designers and developers and other UX professionals into these workshops to help us imagine what would we want to automate, what are, what are pain points that people might want to address through faster, more iterative, automated tooling, and then also looking specifically at what can AI do for you, and how do you feel about that? So my favorite question in research, and I think this is the most important question <laughs> that I ever ask in anything that we do, um, but it's especially important here, is about perceived value. One of the issues with novel technologies, and again, this is something that we've heard a lot from other speakers, and particularly AI, is that it's easy to conflate hype and utility. Right now, there are lots of cool and interesting things that you can do with AI, but are we really solving the right problem? Are we even solving a problem at all? This is doubly important in enterprise contexts where you're looking at productivity tools to get things done, and ultimately, the end users of these tools often weren't the people who chose the tools in the first place. That was often done by higher ups. So you really want to make sure that your end users are getting value out of it and that they can articulate it to you. So coming out of these workshops, we took concepts that were generated and turned them into speculative scenarios or really rough prototypes. And then we investigated these with another set of UX professionals. And we could ask questions like, what is this doing for you? What do you think it's for? How would you use it? Why or would you use it? Why or why not? Um, and really try to get, again, at that heart of the value and see what is useful, what isn't, and what the barriers to adoption or concerns might be. And I think another thing that I know when I started working in AI really made me anxious, and I see this today among others who are doing it, is that building AI is really hard. And even though we now have the joy of having all of these tools that, and kits that allow you to, to make quick AI prototypes, even getting your head around those can be challenging. I know I struggle with them sometimes. So it's fine to do something really quick and dirty. You can use Wizard of Oz testing. You can use a storyboard. You can draw some pictures. I've seen some really cool generative AI type prototypes that don't involve any kind of code at all. They're just mock-ups that people make and use in interesting ways. But what's most important is that you have a way for your end users or your participants to understand and interpret what you're showing them, be able to tell you what they see the value as or don't see the value as, and get to that conversation. It doesn't have to work perfectly, and it will save you time if you don't shoot for that. So later then, we ran a survey with UX professionals to understand their attitudes towards AI in their design work. So we looked at things like, what do they think about AI in general? How do they use it in their day-to-day, -day, both in personal tools and productivity tools? Um, and we asked them about a lot of hypotheticals that were you know, different ways that AI might come into their design process and understand how quickly they were to, uh, how likely they were to, to use it or not use it. And then we were able to develop a framework, which I'll show you in a second, for where AI might be useful in the design process and where it might not. So one of the scenarios is, imagine that you had a design tool that could recreate your design for any layout or device. So when you use this tool, you can automatically convert a design for iOS into a design for a large screen display. So again, a hypothetical tool that might do this. And we asked people, what do they think this would do for them? How would they use it, if at all? Um, what are their concerns? What are the benefits? 
and really try to just gauge what is the perceived utility of something like this. So we found that there were two major spaces where this kind of, these kinds of AI interventions could be valuable in the design process. So one is the efficiency side, which are things like linters, so something that might check your design for, say, accessibility violations. And then the other thing is generative AI, which we now know and maybe love. And that is something, obviously, that we're seeing right now, something that helps you get started, helps you get unblocked, helps you figure out your opportunities, um, get inspired, maybe. So again, this is a, a general framework, but something that I think we'll want to look at. Maybe the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle where you can use it to correct, but you can also use it to generate for you. What this looks like in practice. Um, we're thinking about kind of the spectrum of assistance, different kinds of AI interventions you could have in design. So on one side is adherence. Not everyone can be an expert in everything. There are lots of things, especially if you're an enterprise, you're working on a big design system, or you're trying to do something for a wide range of devices or, um, or languages, maybe, where you need to make sure that you're following the rules and best practices. But then also, sometimes it's great to have inspiration. Sometimes you want to do a design jam, but you don't have anyone to jam with. So this kind of... This kind of spectrum can be very, is a good way to sort of think about the different opportunities that AI might provide. One participant in this research study told us that a tool should, an AI powered tool should help lower the redundant work and help me focus on thinking through the experience and strategy. So, really taking on all, si all parts of the spectrum. Um, but others, and I think we heard a little bit about this from other, other speakers. Um, there's a lot of value in, say, automating things like AI helping, helping you adapt layouts to a bunch of different form factors. Um, if maybe you're not an expert in designing for tablets, but you know your design has to work on a tablet, so maybe AI could help you with that. Sort of like, as one participant put it, pair programming. What if AI was your pair designer? Now, attitudinally, there are also some nuances. So I would frame it at the time, and I think this is still true about a year later, it, as cautious optimism. So on one hand, there's this, there's this desire for efficiency. How many of you have had to make like 10 versions of a UI for a bunch of different screens? Okay, so a good number of you have, have done that. Um, maybe you like it, not everybody does. <laughs> um, so maybe you could hand that over to a tool. But then there's also this strong desire to maintain control over the process. One thing that we've heard repeatedly through the studies that we've done is people say, well, what if the tool doesn't get what I want it to do? And then I have to spend more time cleaning up after it than I saved by using it in the first place. That could be really messy and really annoying and then I'd abandon it. Someone else said, you know, UX design is kind of like glass blowing. It's a form of art. You can make glass at scale, you can make all kinds of cups and cool things, um, but ultimately innovation is something that you need a creative mind behind. And as a designer, I really want to be that creative mind. So I think figuring out this balance, and this balance may be different in different contexts, is going to be key. So another way to think about this is that AI, this is sort of this partnership, or even apprenticeship, um, you have a human, you have an AI that's doing something either more on the linting side or the generative AI side, and then you have this degree of trust over here. So in terms of trust, it's going to depend on the individual, but also on the task. When thinking about trust, UXers have often cited a lot of the things that many of you have talked about. A need for data, like good data, knowing where your data came from, being, being like, uh, sure that the data is good data, the material is, is opt, and all of those things. So I think understanding what drives trust is still something that like, we're very interested in, and I would love to talk to other folks here who are thinking about that. And then there's also different things in different contexts. So you can imagine if you want to generate a bunch of ideas and you're not about to ship something, then using a generative tool might be fine. But if you want to hand something off to a developer for implementation, you might be more wary of what you're seeing and want to make sure that what is getting shipped is right. 
So there was this idea that we heard over and over of, I want to be able to sign off on any decisions that designers make. So it's a partnership, but the designer is in the driver's seat. So with the rise of generative AI, um, I think this is, this is something that we're going to need to continue to study. It can be really tempting to hand off a lot of things to automation, and sometimes that feels necessary. But it's important to tread carefully. If you automate too much or too quickly, what do you lose? What do designers lose? And ultimately, what do your users lose? So it's worth thinking about generative AI as a partner to UX professionals and not a replacement for UX expertise. And that's maybe my optimistic outlook on where we're going, but I think that where we are now, that is really critical. It's a tool that we can leverage, but it's not the entirety of the process. Speaking of which, if you're interested in learning more about how to design for AI, I'd recommend checking out the Pair Guidebook. Um, the link got cut off here, but I'll share that as well after. This is a resource from Google, from researchers, designers, AI scientists, about best practices from designing with AI. So uh, lots of cool stuff in here to check out and definitely um, happy to answer any questions after. Okay, so to conclude, uh, I think there are a bunch of opportunities for AI in the design process and things that I'm hoping to, that we'll learn more about in the future. Um, accessibility, as many people have mentioned, is really important. And there's a lot of kinds of accessibility. It's not just visual accessibility, but all, there are many different things that we need to be thinking about. But you can't be an expert in everything on this list. I mean, maybe some of you are, but a lot of people aren't. So how might we use AI to, to help people create more accessible designs? What about internationalization? Translation's a big piece of that, but also if you look at the impact of different alphabets on a UI, or even cultural conventions, and different ways that content is realized in different, in different countries. How might AI help you understand that if you're not an expert in that space? I talked a lot about devices. So there are like, I don't know, thousands of different kinds of phones out there with different screen sizes. So adapting for devices that you might not be comfortable designing for. Um, novel contexts. Technology outside of AI is always evolving. And I'm partial to the enterprise space because that's where I spent my career. But Enterprise is a really big, challenging world that has a lot of nuance. So are there ways that we could use AI to help guide people who are entering these new spaces? And then, of course, efficiency. You know, we all hopefully want to be more efficient, and AI can always help speed you up. Or hopefully help speed you up. So to recap, AI has begun to do a lot of things for the design process. Some of it's very experimental. Some of it is interesting and some of it's concerning and I think we're, we're going to see we're going to see what happens but ultimately it allows us to create new things to uncover new ideas and to correct or align with standards and ultimately it's about trust trust and perceived value what are the users getting out of it and how much how confident do they feel and for that we're just going to have to keep testing and researching and prototyping and I'm excited to see what everyone does. Thank you.